Hey, good morning, guys. Hayden Aquilon here. Um, hope you all are doing well. I wanted to give an update here on the uh, the journey here with the books. Uh, for those of you who've been following me, you'll know it's my sixth month that I just finished in uh, August. Uh, things are looking good. Numbers are going up um, in terms of sales. Um, I have some really specific data that I put together today because, you know, I was just talking, so my friend Brandon and I have pretty much been doing this the same length. And, uh, you know, a lot of the phone calls go something like this, like, dude, I'm selling so many books, but like, where's all my money? You know, I, why aren't my deposits bigger? What's happening? I'm sure a lot of you are in the same boat. You know, so we, I, I think I'm a lot more into numbers than he is, but uh, we've been talking numbers a lot, trying to figure out what's happening, what the true amount of money we're making is. I mean, I see, you know, online, all you see is, oh, I did 25,000 in sales, I'm crushing it. It's like, no, dude, what did you really bring home after everything? Um, I use QuickBooks. I'm, I mean, I'm tracking this down to the dollar. Um, my, uh, <clears throat> my numbers here, looking at QuickBooks, what I want to talk about is operating income, not, you know, what my P&L sheet shows. So I actually, for August, I lost $2,669. Um, now, some of you are going to be like, what the heck? That's horrible. But there's a lot, there's two major reasons why that's happening. And if you look at my operating income, I actually netted money. Um, I took home $3,760.05. That was the net. Um, and let me give you a quick update so you can see, uh, you know, what the sales were and what I took home uh, was based on that. Um, so quick recap. So six months, been doing this. I'm gonna run through every month real quick. I'll just do the, let's do the sales number and the order number so you can kind of see what that looks like. So uh, first month was March. So March I did $986, 41 orders. Uh, April, $3,502 and I went up 217 orders there. Uh, May, $3,960, so not too much growth there. And I did 260 orders on that one. And June was 5,902, so I had a little growth there and 401 orders sent out. <clears throat> and here's where, so July, I had quite a big jump. I went to $9,248 and 600 orders. Now, end of July on the 25th, um, I moved into a warehouse and uh, before I was just doing it all out of the garage and there were several reasons I went over to a warehouse, but I'm already starting to see how majorly the sales have jumped just from having the availability of the space and the uh, you know total amount of books that I can purchase at a time in order to put in the warehouse, which will bring down, you know, which should bring down your cost that you're paying per box. Um, so anyways, August, month of August, I went up to 16,586 and I did over a thousand orders. I did 1,042 books sold. Um, and just in case you're curious, the average payout per book was $7.83. And I'm actually starting to see that trend upward over time, which is nice. That means my book quality is getting better and uh, just the overall book, you know, sales amounts good. So <clears throat> the major takeaway for me, which maybe a lot of you are in the same boat, I, I looked at my shipments and I was like, how the hell? So this is crazy. I paid... $975 for inbound shipping to Amazon, which it's so freaking cheap. Uh, 
but I mean, that's still a huge number. I mean, that, that really added up. What I'm gonna do now is I was doing, um, you know, shipping individual boxes and having UPS do pickups once a week. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do LTL shipments. So that should take my, that's when you, you know, stack up a pallet. I think it's at least, you need to have at least, uh, what is it, like 150 pounds or more. If you put on, uh, I think Brandon and I were talking, if you put on something like 26 or 28 boxes, that's around a thousand books and we'll, we'll probably ship that much at a time. But what I found out was at, uh, you know, individual boxes cost me 975. I, it's cost me 25 cents per pound to ship these. If I do LTL, it's gonna go down to about nine cents a pound. So I'm gonna I'm gonna save about 60% at least every shipment. So that should theoretically for next month give me another $600 net profit in my pocket if I did the same volume of books, which I won't. I'm gonna do much more next month. So minimum, I'm gonna save $600 switching to the shipping, which is, I mean, that's huge. Uh, that's a lot more cash in my pocket. You know, and theoretically, if I had been doing that this month, instead of netting $3,760, I would have netted about $4,600. Um, and uh, so, by the way, net profit, I'm hearing a lot online, really high net profit numbers. And I, you know, I don't think that that's, I don't think that those people are actually tracking their numbers and, uh, or maybe they just don't have a warehouse uh, but so here's the deal at 3760 my net profit I believe was uh, 23 oh here it is 22.7 percent net profit at the end of the day that's after everything that's car and truck which I spent thirteen hundred dollars on that's my warehouse I spent sixteen hundred and fifty on the warehouse that's after all my cost of goods um, just an FYI, my COGS is a dollar twenty-five a book, and I actually, I actually, my true COGS is a dollar oh nine, but I raised it just to be safe to a dollar twenty-five, just just because. Um, and so that's that's what it comes out to. Um, if I didn't have a warehouse and I was somehow still doing out this out of my garage, which is not, or like call the storage unit, which is not very i mean that's just crazy trying to do it out of that i would have made let's see what i would have made uh net profit margin so let's do 37 60 plus 1650 to get the warehouse back off so i would have netted five thousand four hundred and ten dollars um you know so that looks a little better that puts me closer to 30 percent uh net profit but again, that's not realistic. Uh, what I'm realizing though, and what you probably realize is my warehouse hasn't really, I just got in it 30 days ago. So it hasn't really, the output that I'm getting from my warehouse hasn't exactly shown through in the numbers yet. It's going to. Um, I also tracked how many books I sent out in August. I sent out 3,239 books. So that's that's a major leap from what I was sending in prior. You know, a lot of people out there are shooting for 100 books a week. You know, um, I was doing more than that. I was probably doing like 150, 200 when I was in the garage. But now, <clears throat> you know, with the warehouse, that's, uh, let's see, divided by four, that's an average of sending out 810 books per week. So my output's basically like seven to eight x having the warehouse so all in all i mean it's looking good i i like more net profit but it it's gonna it's definitely gonna come through once i go over to ltl i'm gonna get another 600 net profit and also when all these books that were sent in really get in and start to uh start selling i think that Pretty reasonably, I should hit twenty-two to twenty-five thousand in sales um, next month. And if you take, you know, let's take say twenty-five percent net profit on that, I should net about six thousand two hundred fifty dollars next month if I can hit 
25,000 in sales, which is highly realistic. Uh, so I'm super excited about that. Um, if you guys have any questions on anything, let me know if you want to know. Uh, I think I've given you kind of all my metrics here. Uh, let me just go over one more time. So I sent out 1,000, or excuse me, I had 1,042 orders fulfilled. Uh, my average cost per book right now is $1.25. And that's again on the higher side. Um, I sent out 3,239 books for, for an average of 810 books sent in per week. Um, oh, here's another one. I think I already said this maybe, but my average payout that Amazon is giving back to me, not my profit, is seven dollars and eighty three cents. So if you want to know what my you know average profit per book is, we just do seven eighty three subtract a dollar twenty five. I'm netting six dollars and fifty eight cents per book after I pay for the book. That doesn't include like warehouse costs and all that built in and truck costs. Um, so um, yeah, again, net profit, you know, it's hovering around 25%. Um, so I hope that helps you guys. You know, if you're seeing, just use your head. Like when, if you're seeing all these posts, you follow people on Instagram or whatever, you know, they're doing five, $6,000 in sales and they're, you know, like I'm killing it. This and that. It's like those guys, they're not making any money yet. I mean, you got to be doing at least kind of around where I am to start actually seeing a return. Um, you know, and I still got to pay taxes on that money. So, you know, God, after I pay, you know, this month after taxes are paid out, um, you know, take another 25% off that, I'm probably taking home three grand. Um, and that's doing $16,500. So, uh, this isn't disheartening in any way for me. This just, this, I think one of the main, and I'm gonna segue, segue here for a second. I think one of the main reasons uh, of confusion on Amazon and like, you know, a lot of the, like, why am I doing all this work and nothing's happened? It's like, people aren't actually, they're not looking at the numbers. They have no idea like where they're going. They're just like running around with their head cut off, you know, thinking that, you know, their sale, they're just looking at their sales and they're like, oh, I'm doing good. Look, it's going up every month. It's like, you gotta, you you have to treat this as a real business. You need QuickBooks. You need, you need to, you need to track your numbers consistently. Um, you know, you like the other day, someone was asking me, they're like uh, on Instagram, they're like, what are your, what's your average book cost? And I told them and they're like, oh my God, like I'm paying like over $3 a book. And I'm like, that's just not, you're not going to get, especially when you're not doing bulk, which you will you should never be paying over $3 per book in bulk. But, you know, if you're sourcing books and you're paying over $3, I mean, I know Goodwill has like $4 hardbacks. You're never going to make money on, on this and it's totally not worth it. And don't even bother. I mean, you need to be, you need to be paying, the lowest I pay per book is 20 cents and that's at a Goodwill outlet. So you need to be finding books between 20 cents highest two dollars like absolute highest two dollars ideally like 20 cents to a dollar 50 per book if you're not getting that you need to find the source where you can get it or just don't do it and uh it's just not going to be worth your time um you know and i don't think a lot of people are and this is kind of my rant right now i don't think a lot of people are even tracking like how much gas they're spending driving around town sourcing um which i don't I don't do that much anymore. I only do bulk like 90% of the time, but you know, you gotta figure, you have to factor gas, wear and tear, like, you know, your time, your, how much time are you spending? If you're going out for eight hours, you're driving to hell and back and you only picked up like, you know, 40 books, there's really not gonna be that much money left on the table at the end of the day, you know? And especially after you pay taxes, I mean, you just got to, for everyone who doesn't know their numbers and they don't know for a fact how much money they're netting every month, you need to stop what you're doing right now and you need to look back and you need to, you need to figure out all your numbers. You need to see how much you're making and see if this thing's even worth it for you. And if it's not, just stop now. Um, 
or you know look into doing bulk if you have the the capital to move into bulk that's great and i highly recommend that you do move into bulk because uh you can't really make too much money sourcing and that's that's my honest honest opinion there um you just you can't you can only be so many places um you know you're not you're one person so there's always going to be a cap of how many books you can send in when you're doing that and uh, it's hard to scale the one way you could scale sourcing which uh, i know a couple people that use this model is they hire scanners and they pay them like a set amount per book and then some of you even pay hourly uh hourly wage for them to go out and do that but there's so many unknown factors doing that i mean i'm sure there's several days where they actually lose money sending someone out to go scan and you know pay them hourly to do that and also who knows if those people aren't you know keeping the high dollar books that they find and putting sending them in there themselves you know so yeah you know opinion at the end of the day just know your numbers track your numbers if it's not if it's not looking good and the business model is not going to work i mean why why spend your time doing that you know and just be aware of what you're seeing online there's a lot of fluff out there and uh you know i just the only reason i do these videos guys is to i want to one document my journey and just show you what's possible and just tell it how it is um oh that that made me just realize something the 3760 unnetted i also i i got everything factored into that except for the software which the soft no i did sorry i did i i made 3906 before all my software costs and the seller fees and that, that came out to 125.95 for a net of 3,760. So I did do that right. I just wanted to make sure I'm giving you guys the accurate numbers. Um, so if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Also subscribe if you're not. Um, follow the journey. I won't lead you astray. And uh, good luck out there. Um, email me if you want. Uh, HaydenAquilon at gmail.com. Also, if you want to text me, that's fine. 805-895-9895. I'm here to help. You guys have a good day. Talk to you later.